All right, guys, welcome to another episode of RCW. So, finally, I am back. I know it hasn't been too long since we last shot RCW Destiny, but I took a few days off. Um, my, uh, unfortunately, my guinea pig Oreo, we had to put him down. Um, and, uh, you know, wanted to take a few days off to kind of, you know, digest because it's been a little bit different. Um, as far as atmosphere wise in my room, cause I'm used to, uh, I'm used to him being in here. Um, but, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, his, his time came, so we had to, you know, take care of that. And I took a couple days off to kind of just mellow out and, and, um, deal with it. Uh, you know, it, it, it's still kind of hard, but. You know, it is what it is. It happens, um, you know. Uh, just like with humans, our hour time comes and it happens and it's unfortunate, but... Um, but, you know, it, it, it's it's something that happens. And, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta deal with it. Um, but the good news is, is uh, I did a little bit of rearranging... Um, around in my room here, um, as, you know, my room is my streaming office, if you will. Um, so I did a little bit of rearranging, uh, you guys obviously can't see it. Um, but because of this rearranging around of my room and whatever, it's a lot easier now, um, in terms of cleaning up and getting ready to stream, um, you know, my Xbox is no longer on my dresser anymore. <laughs> so, uh, my Xbox is actually, my mother got me this, um, kind of like this, it's not really a nightstand, but it's this, like, shelf thing with, like, four little squares, and she put my Xbox in one of those little, um, openings, and I actually bought, uh, the vertical stand for it so that it can stand up vertically, um, just because if I can make it further out of the way, it'll be a lot easier. Um, but it, it looks nice now, actually. It looks a lot more nicer. All the wires are tucked behind um, out of the way, so it makes it easier for cleanup. But it's good to be back in, you know, my environment and something that I'm comfortable with. And, you know, even taking a few days off from streaming we all need that um as content creators and and stuff like that we all need that and and even taking a few days off throws me off because when i'm on a schedule like when i have a schedule like kind of like with my college when i have a schedule and all of a sudden i don't have class or i don't have this or i don't have this um you know it it throws my whole day off and I have to figure out how am I going to fill that time um, because I've set aside time for streaming, set aside time for that class or scheduled time for that class. So how am I going to, you know what I mean? So um, in case you don't know, uh, real quick before we get into the show um, and, you know, get back into the wrestling element here. Uh, my streaming schedule has changed. It's gone from, uh, I think it was like Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I think it was, um, to Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Um, so that's a little bit of a change due to the new college semester. And, and you're going to be seeing that um, for next semester, too, when I have, a, I have one more semester after this, and then I'm done. And then I graduate, but... You're going to be seeing that um, schedule possibly change again, um, which is fine. Um, it's it's all it's all good. We I learned to work around stuff. Um, real quick, also there is the newest episode of the Angle Podcast. Um, the Angle Podcast, that which most of you have probably seen um, when I last streamed i think that's when i last streamed was the angle podcast uh with chaotic and young sin 
Um, that is on my website at ProWrestlingGA.com. Um, that is on my website. You can check it out. I will enter the link here in chat so that you guys can um, check it out real quick. Pro Wrestling. Here, I'm typing it. I think I think I typed it right. You guys can check that out. I just posted a review of the WWE Royal Rumble. Um, so definitely check that out. I go through every match except the two matches on the kickoff show because I don't watch the kickoff shows for WWE pay-per-views. I think they're kind of pointless because they're only two matches. And, and most of the time, the title doesn't change on a kickoff show. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but you guys can check out that episode of the podcast where we talk about creative freedom and why it's important to the world of professional wrestling not just to the fans but to the performers that that perform for us uh every day on tv or you know if you're lucky enough to go to an event and see it live um you know whatever uh whatever works for you um so yeah we just talk about that we talk about you know some of the, some of the things we talk about are our first wrestling live events that we've been to, um, and other things. Uh, we usually like to have topics per ep per episode. That's what we usually do. Is we have topics, and a lot of times we ramble. Um, you know, just because that's what a podcast does. And and uh, when we start talking about wrestling. You know, we kind of ramble, we kind of keep going and, and keep talking. So, but we'd like to have at least four or five, um, like, subtopics we'd like to cover under one big topic. And that just happened to be a great topic to cover. Um, so definitely check that out on the website. That is a website exclusive. You can't see it on YouTube. That is a website exclusive. Um, you'll have to go to the website to watch it. It's completely free. Um, all it is is me just taking the YouTube link and posting it into the website and putting it on the website. That I'm doing good, Wild Tay. It's good to see you back in here. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry that I didn't get to your message earlier. Um, but, yeah. Uh, another thing uh, before we start the show is I'd like to thank you guys for showing the enormous support for the website. Um, it, it's been awesome uh, getting the chance to have a website up and running like that and to have something like that where it where it runs well and does what it needs to do and stuff like that you know you, you never you never know what you're going to get into um and it costs money to run that website it costs about 120 dollars a year um for the web hosting so i pay that per year so that you guys can enjoy and enjoy the website and enjoy the content and enjoy the upcoming content that's going to be on there. Um, you know, so it costs money to run. And when it comes to, you know, that with anything that costs money, you want to make sure that it's well invested and well worth it. And I think it was, I, it was something I didn't feel like when we started creating the website in November, I didn't feel like, we were jumping the gun in any way. Um, I thought it was the perfect time to do it. And with my buddy John helping me out, and then him passing the torch, if you will, on to Chaotic um, to help me out with the website, that's fantastic. Uh, we also have, um, speaking of which, we also have the EWL, the Epic Wrestling League, his wrestling show that I'm helping, collaborating with on him. We have the first episode of the Universe Mode happening tonight, I believe at 6.45 or 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tonight um, on his channel. And so he's been editing down the tournaments, the Epic Wrestling League tournaments, the women's and the men's, and he's going to be editing down the Universe Mode so that that can be put on the website because every single thing that we collaborate with each other on is going to be on that website. Um, you know, so that his content, my wrestling content, young sins, wrestling content, and 
anybody else who decides to join us and collaborate with us can be put on there just because we want to grow the fan base of wwe 2k games uh it's not a saturated game like fortnite or a popular game by any means among the streaming community so that is our primary goal is to take all of these content creators that we watch and kind of come together and deliver our content whether it's content we've collaborated on our, our own content etc so if you have some time please definitely check out the pro wrestling ga website as we get finally started here with randy orton the rcw carnage champion going up against johnny gargano here after his successful title defense against buddy murphy now Buddy Murphy definitely held his own in that match despite coming up short um, in in earning the RCW Carnage title, which you see Randy Orton holding there. Um, he came up short in that. However, he was able to at least prove his worth against somebody like Randy Orton. I thought after a couple of RKOs, it was going to be over for um, for Randy Orton. So, you know, I thought it was going to be over uh, for Buddy Murphy, but he proved his worth in that match despite coming up short. So no... No ill towards Buddy Murphy as he definitely proved something. Just because he didn't capture the title doesn't mean he didn't intimidate anybody else on the RCW roster, including the RCW Carnage Champion Randy Orton. But now, with our next pay-per-view rebirth looming, it is time for somebody else and the rest of the RCW roster to prove themselves worthy of a title shot. And we have Johnny Gargano, Johnny Wrestling, looking to do exactly that by taking on the RCW Carnage Champion and Randy Orton. Now I believe, if my calculations are correct, that, that Randy Orton and Johnny Gargano, this will be the first time of them facing off here on RCW, and it appears that Randy Orton does not want to wait here. As he goes after Johnny Gargano, but Johnny Gargano firing back now. Oh, and a big slap to the face. Johnny doesn't even have his uh, little vest jacket off there. But now the bell has been rung. Now it is Randy Orton and Johnny Gargano here. It's Johnny. With a kick right to the side of the face there. To the RCW Carnage Champion. And now with a leg DDT there to Randy Orton. And Johnny Gargano trying for the elbow, but no. And a big uppercut there. Johnny in a knee right to the back as Randy Orton definitely proving this worth there Johnny able to take his jacket off for this match finally able to look ready but it seems that Randy Orton looked to get the upper hand but based on what I know about Johnny Gargano you can't cut him short as the referee didn't get out of the way there now the referee is down Seems though that he's okay. Now looking to wear down the Viper, Randy Orton here. Good strategy by Johnny Gargano. Ooh, but it seems that Randy Orton with that hip toss there. Able to get out of that. Ooh, but a kick to the back. No. 
And Johnny Gargano taking down Randy Orton. I don't know here. Maybe Buddy Murphy awakened something in Randy Orton and got into Randy Orton's head somehow, and Johnny's taking advantage of it. And a DDT to Randy Orton. Johnny Gargano firing on all cylinders here. Drop kick to the back of Randy Orton now, and now Randy Orton finding himself in a bit of trouble in a cutter from Johnny Gargano. Taking a page out of Randy Orton's book there, except Randy Orton calls it the RKO. Well, tried for the DDT there, but Johnny Gargano got himself out of it. Oh, but Randy again. Looking to connect with it this time. Vintage Orton DDT there. And Johnny finds himself in a world of hurt right now. Now Randy's looking to go to that place here. Looking to send Johnny packing as the RKO. From Randy Orton. Oh, but Johnny kicked out at two. Johnny kicked out of the RKO. Johnny is still fighting. As Randy Orton continues to hammer away. Is Johnny wisely rolling out of the outside of the ring there, but Randy Orton's right back into the ring, ready to meet him and draping Johnny over the ropes. And an elbow drop right to the sternum. Of Johnny Gargano. And now Johnny's quickness may be the ideal advantage here in this match. Is now Johnny going to the outside after the RCW Carnage Champion. Very wise here, not wasting little time here. Going to bot kick there. Oh, but a super kick. And Randy Orton goes face first off of the uh, announce table there. Ooh, and a big uppercut there. And Randy Orton rolls to, out to the outside of the ring here. And now looking to submit Johnny Gargano, but it's not going to work here. Not on the outside. It's not going to do anything for him here on the outside. And now Johnny Gargano taking Randy Orton back into the ring. This is exactly what Johnny wants here in an elbow right to the face. This is exactly what Johnny needs. Looking for the lawn dart in the corner. Lawn dart to Randy Orton. And that may have busted the RCW Carnage Champion open. And it did. You can see the blood from Randy Orton's forehead. Gushing there, now working on the arm of Randy Orton, looking to pop that shoulder out of its socket. That's something that Randy Orton has had problems with in the past, shoulder injuries. Now going for the cover here, one, two, and Randy with the kick out. Johnny almost had him there. Johnny almost had Randy Orton. Wrapping him in a head scissor and an elbow right to the head. Looking for the Gargano escape. Gargano escape here. Looking for the Gargano escape here on Randy Orton. Looking to get Randy Orton to tap out. But Randy finding a way out of the Gargano escape. Ooh, and an uppercut again. As Johnny tried to roll out, but Randy Orton putting a stop to that one. Now looking to stomp the foot. Oh, Johnny got out of the way, but a drop kick. Wow, what a drop kick from Randy Orton. Dragging him to the middle of the ring here. 
Randy Orton going for a huge stomp there. And he's just sitting here. Just sitting here, here bragging to bragging to the crowd. Now grabbing Johnny, looking for that DDT again. Another DDT, and that busted Johnny wide open. That busted Johnny wide open. And now Randy Orton's looking to take Johnny to that place one more time. RKO to Johnny Gargano looking to get the win here. And Johnny kicked out at two and a half. Johnny kicked out of two RKOs. The same, little bit of the same deja vu here. From RCW Destiny when Randy Orton took on Buddy Murphy. Now Randy Orton's fired up now. He is looking to end the comeback streak of Johnny Gargano. And we've seen him do it multiple times in a power slam. A power slam... And now he's calling Johnny up to his feet. Calling Johnny up to his feet looking for another DDT. Another one. Johnny is absolutely out of it right now. Johnny is absolutely out of it as Randy Orton looking for the final exclamation point. But Johnny reversed. What's up, Chaotic? What's going on, buddy? Johnny reversed the RKO. He kicked out of it two times. Randy Orton went for it a third time. And Johnny reversed it. Into the corner now, but no avail there. Oh, and an uppercut again. Randy Orton... Trying to figure out what he needs to do here. To put Johnny Gargano down for the count. I don't know how Johnny's surviving right now. Because he's calling Johnny up to his feet again. Looking for that DDT again. DDT one more time. Looking to go to that place one more time. And Johnny reversed it again. Johnny reversed the RKO again. Oh my. Oh my. Are we going to see an upset here? Super kick to Randy Orton. Cover, one, two, Randy Orton kicked out. Randy Orton kicked out of the super kick from Johnny Gargano. And Randy Orton stops that comeback. S stopping the momentum of Johnny Wrestling. As Johnny looked for that kick to the side of the head, but to no avail. And there is no stopping Johnny Wrestling right now. Uh-oh, Randy. Randy grabbing a chair, though. Randy grabbing a chair. A referee says, no, you can't do that. Chairs aren't legal. And Johnny taking advantage. Kick, drop kicks to the back. Randy Orton got tired of... Fire to Johnny shit. Randy Orton. Getting tired of 
Johnny constantly one-upping him here. As I think he was just baiting Johnny to the outside. Having Johnny get back into the ring and exactly, exactly what Randy Orton was doing. Trying to bait Johnny Gargano, but Johnny again firing back. Johnny again firing back. Randy, though. Randy! Looking for that DDT again. Another DDT. Another DDT, and Johnny is still moving somehow. I don't know how, but he is. And now Randy looking to connect with another RKO. One, two, oh my, again, Johnny Gargano kicked out. This guy is, I don't know, maybe we need to, maybe we need to drug test this guy, because I don't know what's going on right now. I don't know what Johnny's on, but whatever Johnny's on, I freaking want it. Drop kick to the back of Randy Orton, because... I don't... What's it gonna take? What's it gonna take? This is only the first match of the show. What's it gonna take for either of these men to go down? Double axe handle! Randy doing everything in his power. Pulling out almost every move in his arsenal, trying to get rid of Johnny Gargano here, but it doesn't seem to be working. It seems that Johnny just does not want to go down. This song is called Rebel Hard, and he definitely has a lot of it. Looking for a DDT here. And another DDT. On Johnny Gargano. Could that be it? Finally. And Johnny kicked out. Oh my. This is ridiculous, man. This is absolutely ridiculous. The amount these guys have literally beaten the hell out of each other is just astounding right now. Randy's got to figure out something. I don't know what he was trying to go for there, but whatever it is, it didn't work. Ooh, and a drop kick grabbing Johnny. A drop kick and both men are down. Referee should be counting here, but nope. Apparently not. Looking for another DDT on Johnny Gargano. Connecting. Oh my. Randy Orton. Looking to get rid of Johnny Wrestling. He's got to do it some way, shape, or form. He feels that this is the only way. For Johnny Wrestling to go down. And Randy is looking to finish Johnny Gargano once and for all here. RKO through the announce table. And Johnny is out. Count of five here. Six. And even more punches to the face of Johnny Gargano. 
into the cover. One, two, three, and Randy Orton finally gets the victory over Johnny Gargano after a brutal match. My God. But well, what heart from Johnny Gargano as he refused to go down. And even though that Johnny couldn't come through with the win here, I have to give Johnny credit where credit is due. That is the longest I've ever seen anyone survive here with Randy Orton. But Matt! But Max! Max Mercury! We haven't seen him in forever! We haven't seen Max in forever! He's coming out to spoil this celebration of Randy Orton! We haven't seen Johnny in or we haven't seen Max in forever, excuse me! All this excitement and Mad Max! Mad Max is back! Looking for that Max, Max driver, that pile driver there! Package pile driver! <laughs> oh my god! Max is back! Wow. Talk about a way to open the show. Johnny Gargano refusing to go down. It took a RKO through the announce table for Johnny to go down. And then we have Max returning to RCW, spoiling the celebration. Of Randy Orton. Wow, what a way to open the show, folks, as we have women's tag team action here. We have the Outlaw Sisters, Sky and Luna, taking on the team of Sasha Banks and Bayley. Now with the Outlaw Sisters having so much chemistry being blood family, is it enough to take down best friend chemistry? And Sasha Banks and Bayley, we will find out next year. Now Luna Outlaw definitely achieved her destiny, becoming the RCW Women's Champion yet again after beating Mercy Phantom in a grueling matchup, which had to be restarted as part of her toe was underneath the rope. It took many replays, many camera angles, but we wanted to make sure to get it right. And come to think of it, Luna Outlaw has had her fair share of controversies, especially when the title is on the line. Just at RCW Anarchy, we'd seen that when she took on her sister Sky for that same title, and her arm was underneath the rope. Luna's arm was underneath the rope, and it had to be restarted. Originally, it was Sky who retained in that match, but then it had to be restarted. Due to Luna's arm being underneath the rope, so it's very shocking here as, as, you know, if it happens once, it's understandable. But if it happens two or three times, you start to question yourself a little bit. You start to wonder what's going on. But we can't worry about that too much now. The sky's already out here. She awaits for Luna to come out here with her RCW Women's Championship here. She avenged her loss at RCW Turmoil just a season ago. When she unmasked, she took off her mask, revealing her true identity. Some may say they knew it all along, but I don't know if Luna really realized her true potential until now. 
And it's because of that he holds that title right there. But she can't get too comfortable as, you know, the next RCW pay-per-view at RCW Rebirth, she's going to have to defend that title. Thank you, Ice White, for the lurk. I appreciate you. As Sasha Banks comes out here. First, but let's waste no time, folks. As we get her best friend, Bailey out here with her for this tag team matchup. You may not have the wacky inflatable tube men anymore, but you know, she has her best friend in her corner. As Sky Outlaw, look at this, start this one off against Sasha Banks, but Sky tried to go for a basement drop kick, but a Lefez press from Sasha Banks. Stops her in her tracks. Ooh, but Sky pushing her away now. Ooh, but a big elbow right there from Sky. Irish Whip and Luna helping out her sister there. I don't know what Luna tried to do there, but whatever it is, it didn't work, and Sasha Banks had enough. Sasha Banks had enough, and... And Sky tried to go after Sasha Banks, but referee held her back a little bit. And Sasha Banks now with a double knees in the corner. As Bailey got off the uh, apron there to help out her partner. We are seeing some fire here to start this off. And a huge spine buster to Sasha Banks going for the pin one. And just to count a one there. He lifts up Sasha Banks now. Looking to take her to her corner. This is exactly what she needs to happen here. Looking for this double team. Drop toe hold into an elbow drop there. Now Luna is in the match. But B Bailey gets tagged off of the hot tag there. Now Bailey is in this match now. Luna not paying attention. The hot tag. Oh, but a huge running spear to Bailey. And a standing moonsault to Bailey now. As the Outlaw Sisters look to prove their dominance here. Coming up short in EWL. Sky made it really far in the EWL Women's Championship Tournament. As we will see the Outlaws, or at least one half of the Outlaw Sisters in action in EWL tonight in Chaotic Stream. As Sky takes on Natalia, the, the Buddha Fire here, and it's. Spine buster to Bailey. One and a kick out. And now Bailey finds herself in a little bit of trouble here. Standing moonsault. I don't know, Luna. I wouldn't go up, go that far. As she gets Sasha Banks off of the apron. Now, a standing shooting star, I don't know. She didn't get much of that. A little too far. Now, going up top now. Headbutt to Bailey. Into a cover, a very disrespectful cover, if I might add. And Bailey kicks out at one again. Now looking for the blackout here on Bailey, and she connects with those quick strikes. Now going for another cover here, one. But Sasha Banks is right there to break that one up. Sky comes in with a bulldog there, that running bulldog, and takes care of Sasha for the time being. This is exactly what the Outlaw Sisters want here now. As Luna goes, trying to go for the dawning, but Bailey reversed it. Bailey reversed the dawning. 
And now Bailey with a Bailey to belly on Luna. Sky distracting the referee. One, two, three, and Bailey got the win. Bailey and Sasha got the win over the Outlaw Sisters. I don't know what's going on with them, but their chemistry just hasn't been there. Sky tried to distract the referee, but. To no avail there. And Bailey and Sasha just got the win over the Outlaw Sisters. I don't know what's going on with those two. Doesn't seem right. As we have Kevin Owens going up against Ricochet in this next match here. Now, Kevin Owens making his return to RCW action, but only under one condition. If Brian Outlaw or Kevin Owens were to get a title... Kevin Owens wants to challenge for that said title. Now, with Brian Outlaw defeating Zero for the RCW World title, could we see a little bit of friendly competition, if you will? At the next pay-per-view for that title, as Brian does have to defend that title under RCW rules, As Kevin Owens is coming out here with Brian Outlaw. Now, I don't know the, the nature of their friendship or even if there is one. As Kevin Owens is not one to work well with others, but it seems that this whole, if I return, you, you let me challenge you for the title, this whole quote-unquote agreement... Seems to be seems to me the only reason why Kevin Owens and Brian Outlaw are giving each other the time of day. To me, if it wasn't for this title agreement, Kevin Owens and Brian Outlaw would want nothing to do with each other. That's just my personal opinion. Knowing how Kevin Owens and Brian Outlaw both are, it's just my personal opinion that Kevin Owens and Brian Outlaw wouldn't want anything to do with each other if this agreement didn't take place. As the one and only Ricochet looks to make something of himself here in RCW by getting a win over Kevin Owens. Let's see if he can do just that. Here tonight against Kevin Owens. Let's not waste any more time, folks, as we have Brian Outlaw at ringside. Let me refresh my memory here. Take control, pin break up, grab object, distract ally, distract target. Okay. Need to refresh my memory a little bit. It's Kevin Owens with the big boot there. On Ricochet. But Ricochet coming back there. But Kevin Owens with a German suplex. Brian Outlaw is loving every second of this match. Kevin Owens right now in a little bit of trouble after that is Ricochet firing back here on Kevin Owens. 
But Kevin Owens with a quick reversal. Ricochet with a quick reversal with that elbow. Going to kick right to the head here. Oh, what Brian Outlaw. Brian Outlaw distracting Ricochet, helping out Kevin Owens. And I knew that Brian Outlaw would get himself involved here. There's a kick out at one here. For Ricochet. Oh, but Ricochet coming back now. Ricochet throwing Kevin Owens into the ropes. Drop down. Leapfrog. What's Ricochet going for here? And a big kick right to the face of Kevin Owens. Flatliner. Trying to go for the 630 centon, but no. No 630 centon. Brian, I think Brian was going to try and take Ricochet down there, but a pop up power bomb. One, two, Ricochet kicked out. Ricochet kicked out of the pop up power bomb. And now Ricochet's coming back now. Ricochet planting Kevin Owens. Ricochet, what's he going for here? Oh, Pele kick. Pele kick. Dropping Kevin Owens with a DDT off of the apron. Brian can't touch Ricochet as this will end in disqualification if he does in a cutter. So Brian's just got to watch this. As Kevin Owens pushes Ricochet away. But Ricochet driving Kevin Owens head first. Onto the floor, count of four here. As Ricochet throws Kevin Owens back into the ring now. But again, Brian gets involved. Brian getting involved. As now Ricochet gets dropped. One, two, and Ricochet kicks out. Now Kip up. Kip up from Ricochet. Ricochet not allowing himself to go down and a Pele kick right to Kevin Owens again. One, two, oh, no, just a one count as Kevin Owens. As Kevin Owens gets... An elevated flatliner. Elevated flatliner. And Ricochet now. Cut her again. Looking for that 630 cent on. 630. One, two, and Kevin Owens kicked out. Kevin Owens kicked out. I think Brian was trying to distract the referee. But it didn't work. His plan didn't work. And Kevin Owens is still fighting back. Kevin Owens. Desperately fighting back here. And shot takes down Ricochet. As he's going up top. Kevin Owens! Throwing caution to the wind there. As now he can do whatever the hell he wants with Ricochet now. Ricochet doing a little bit of taunting. Oh! But a kick right to the midsection. Ricochet though, Ricochet with a drop kick.
standing shooting star press. I think Brian Outlaw just wants to make sure that Kevin Owens can do this on his own. A rope break as Brian distracting Ricochet again. Brian distracting Ricochet as Kevin Owens with that Tiger suplex there. Now dragging. Ricochet in a count of two. Count of two there. Looking for this panhandle. Panhandle there. Panhandle bomb there. One. Two. And Ricochet kicked out at two. Kevin Owens can't believe it. Distracting the referee. Is Brian Outlaw there? Ooh, but Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens coming back. Ricochet. Ricochet coming back. Brian trying to do everything in his power. They all bought his buddy, but an elevated flatliner. Ricochet just won't go away. Ricochet just won't go away. Pele kick to Kevin Owens. Remember, if Brian Outlaw touches Ricochet, this is done. 6.30 cent on. And Brian, again helping out his buddy Kevin Owens. Is Ricochet again going up to the top rope? Ricochet! Oh my! One, two, and Brian again distracting the referee. And Brian just got thrown out! Brian is thrown out of this match. And now it's just Kevin Owens and Ricochet on his own. But is it enough? Is it enough for Kevin Owens to get the victory? Looking for the pop up power bomb. One, two, and no Ricochet kicked out. Brian Outlaw just got ejected trying to help out his buddy, which he did. He did practically saved him a couple times. I'm going to stomp right to the face. Now Ricochet's bleeding. Ricochet's bleeding. Now Ricochet coming back now. Ricochet trying to pump himself up. Stomp to the chest. Shooting star press, standing shooting star press, that is. Into a cover. One. Two. And Kevin Owens with a kick out. So close. Ricochet trying to go for the drop kick. Kevin Owens reversed. Looking for that panhandle again. Connects. Dragging him. To the middle of the ring. Into a cover. One. Two, three, and Kevin Owens gets the victory. Give some of the assists to Brian Outlaw, that is. Distracting Ricochet multiple times. Distracting the ref multiple times, too, as well. And this little buddy-buddy system seems to be working out well for Kevin Owens. And Brian Outlaw, but how long will it last? I have no idea. As Brian Outlaw takes on Chris Danger here in a table match. And the only reason why I say I say that now 
is because Chris Danger had attacked Brian Outlaw a couple episodes before. And he wants a little bit of retribution. Especially now that he is the RCW World Champion. And he basically has a target on his back. He always does because he's an outlaw, let's face it. He always does because he's an outlaw. But especially now, as the RCW World Champion, with that title, and with you being on top of the mountain, you always have a target on your back. In this match with this stipulation, no disqualification. No count outs. The only way to win is to put your opponent through the table. I may have to give the edge to Brian Outlaw on this one. And that's not me being biased, but... You know, that's just because I've seen what he can do. As Brian Outlaw carries that RCW World Championship, and he will defend that at RCW Rebirth. In a couple episodes' time, we will find out who will be facing him for said title. And in case you miss any of this stream, it'll be up on my YouTube channel, as well as the Pro Wrestling Gaming Association, Pro Wrestling GA website. Real quick, uh, as Brian Outlaw is gloating here, coming out, I'd like to say, if you guys want to get involved, either with this universe mode or anything like that, you can join me, join the Discord. Use the command uh, Discord to get a to get a link. As well, if you go on the website, there is an email called ProWrestlingGA at gmail.com. And you can shoot us an email there. Uh, I'm in direct contact with Chaotic through his email. So whatever whatever happens, I'll be contacting him either way. And you guys can get involved either if it's, you know, trying to get involved with, you know, our universe modes or anything that we are doing or simply just providing feedback and, and other things. Uh please feel free to email us. I check that email all the time. I have notifications on my phone and, and everywhere you can imagine. As Chris Danger makes his way out here, now we've seen the Outlaws and Chris Danger face off before. Has this rivalry been reignited? Well, it sure as hell seems like it as we get ready for this Tables matchup. Here we go. In a big boot here to start this one off from Brian Outlaw and a knee drop right to the head. Now, in the past, a couple years ago at the MWE, Manhattan Wrestling Entertainment, two years before Brian and the Outlaws joined in the RCW. Chris Danger was subject to a concussion, to an onslaught of moves by Brian Outlaw and his brother Jason. And that didn't end well. And I'm pretty sure even though that concussions are brain damage, Chris Danger hasn't forgotten about that. As Brian Outlaw goes up to the top, but a knee strike there from Chris Danger. And a knee strike right back as Chris Danger looking to end this match early by bringing in the table. But Brian had other plans. Brian had other plans. Reversal. In the face of Chris Danger now. A couple of right hands. Stomps in the corner. L.U. Bomb getting Chris Danger out of the corner there. And now Brian taking the table. He's taking the table. He's leaning it up against the corner. Getting it ready. Uh oh, but Chris. Chris looking to end this. Chop. Oh, I thought he might have been trying to end it. 
It looked like he could have. He could have right there. Right then and there. This match could end in a matter of minutes if Chris wants it to win a moonsault. Springboard moonsault there. But a dragon screw leg whip. And these two know each other very well. As Chris Danger is the main reason. Or the outlaws are the main reason anyway. On why Chris Danger came to RCW. He said pair me up with the outlaws or no deal. And that's exactly what happened. But Chris Danger turned on the outlaws with the Rogue family. Led by Rosemary and Marielle and Jay Rogue. But Jay Rogue and the Rogue family went on to greener pastures as they are no longer in contract with RCW. But best of luck to them in their endeavors is Brian Outlaw with a suplex there. A knee right to the back. And again, this rivalry has found itself rekindled. Oh, but Brian didn't connect. Chris Danger didn't even have to throw up the knees. Super kick into a suplex there. It looked, looked to be a... I know it wasn't German. It didn't look like one. Well, what a combination there from Chris Danger. Brian throws Chris in the middle of the ring in a middle fist drop. Middle rope fist drop there. Patented Brian Outlaw there. He doesn't shy away from that move, trying to go for a knee strike, dragon screw leg whip from Chris. Ooh, Brian's holding his knee. Maybe his knee may be a little bit injured, but who knows? Brian's not one to show injuries, looking for the Philly special there from Chris Danger, but Brian got out of it. Like I said, the only way to win this is to put your opponent through the table, but it. It appears that neither of these men are in the in the rush to do so. These two are just looking to punish the hell out of each other. And with it being a tables match and no disqualifications. These two can do whatever the hell they want. I wonder, does it count if Brian puts him through the announce table? As a correction there on the outside. As Brian's looking to finish Chris. Not through that table. Through this one. Oh, but Chris. Chris with the reversal. Throwing Brian back into the ring. Brian trying to use the ropes for leverage. Oh, Chris coming back. Oh, throwing Brian over. If this were the Royal Rumble, he'd be almost eliminated. Like I said, it doesn't appear that these men are in any rush. Chris Danger a little bit busted open there. He right to the midsection. Chris Danger is the one that put Brian Outlaw on the shelf for some time here in RCW in the past. What's Brian going for here? Throwing Chris Danger out to the ringside area. And a huge suicide dive to the outside. Looking for the correction here. 
on the outside to Chris. And again, these two are just... Beating the living hell out of each other, and they're enjoying every second of it. I tried to grab Chris there, but Brian again. Coming up short there. Now Brian gets thrown back into the ring. Chris taking the table. And now using the table as a weapon. I don't know if I would have done that. I would have left it there. Setting up the table now. Possibly Chris looking to finish this, but Brian has other plans. Throwing Chris back in. He almost threw him through the table. That would have been it. That would have been it. That would have been it there. Irish whip. Oh, tried for a Philly special, but no. Uh-oh. Brian's looking to put Chris through the table. Lifts him up. Powerbomb through the table. And Brian wins. Like I said at the beginning of this matchup, it, it, even the middle of it, it didn't seem like these two were really looking to win this match. It you know, this match could have been over a long time ago, but these men just wanted to punish each other. And Brian definitely got his revenge. But it doesn't seem like Brian is done by any means. Throws him back into the ring now. Throwing him into the turnbuckle on a clothesline. Super kick. Now looking for a guilty verdict here. Guilty verdict on Chris Danger. And a little bit of revenge. For what happened a couple episodes ago was Chris Danger all of a sudden just came out of nowhere, attacked Brian Outlaw, but now Brian Outlaw got a little bit of revenge. And we have a two out of three falls match here in this main event. As we have Daniel Bryan taking on Aleister Black, a dream match scenario. Now Daniel Bryan, a former RCW Carnage Champion. Aleister Black, a former RCW Tag Team Champion. Apparently I didn't leave entrances on, so we're just gonna, I guess we're gonna just start it and kick it off. As it seems to me, Aleister Black suffered a minor rib injury. I wonder how long... How long he's been suffering from that, but it may play a factor in this. But Alistair with a clothesline to the outside doesn't seem to be affecting him right now as he, as he tried for the knee, but Daniel Bryan got out of the way. An elbow.
The longer this match goes on, the worst Alistair's going to be. A stomp to the arm there of Alistair Black. Like I said, I don't know where he would have gotten the rib injury from unless I'm completely missing something. Kick right to the side of the head, and it seems that Daniel Bryan has this match under control. But Alistair with the forearm. Going after Daniel Bryan as a stomp to the arm. Again, this is a two out of three falls match here. Meaning that you must have two out of three falls. Strategy in this match definitely plays a role because the longer you go, the more tired you're going to be and the easier it is going to be for your opponent to take advantage. Alistair said no, but a disrespectful slap to Daniel Bryan there. And another forearm to the face. Oh, and a knee strike. What a running knee strike there. Daniel Bryan won. And no, Daniel Bryan again with the kick out. Kick to the back. Daniel Bryan saw that one come and grabbed the foot of Alistair in a drop kick. Right to the knee. Now looking to get the first fall in this match from Alistair and a kick out at one. I'm surprised Alistair's firing this much here considering the injury that he had suffered. Kick to the back of the leg now. As Alistair is finding a way back in this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because with a rib injury. It can prevent you from difficult to breathe. And a running knee. Or a running bicycle knee strike there from Alistair. Doesn't go for the cover. Very questionable. But who am I to judge? Alistair Black. Alistair, what's he going for here? Calling Daniel Bryan up to his feet. This can't be good. Whatever Alistair has in mind, elbow. And Daniel Bryan gets out of the way, but he can't connect with anything. Alistair tried for a suplex, but no drop kick. He's got the, w, or the RCW Universe behind him as he's looking for that Running knee! Two Alistair Black. One. Two. And no, Alistair kicked out at two. And we are still tied at zero. We are still tied at zero. But Alistair coming back now. Black Mass! Black Mass! One, two, and Daniel Bryan kicked out. Daniel Bryan kicked out of the black mass. Shoulder tackle there. Jumping on the arm now. What?
Alistair Black with the German suplex. Gut wrench German there. Gut wrench German. One, two. And again, Daniel Bryan kicks out. And Alistair Black is livid. Tom to the chest. These two men absolutely beating the hell out of each other. And it hasn't even been... These men haven't even scored one fall yet. It's Daniel Bryan again looking for that running knee. And he connects with the running knee on Alistair looking to get the first fall. And no, Alistair again kicked out of the running knee. Alistair taking a little bit too much time. Brian propped up to his feet. Alistair caught him. Alistair tried to go for a DDT, but to no avail. Daniel Bryan throwing Alistair out. What's Daniel Bryan doing? Hitting the ropes. Drop kick through the ropes. Tom to the arm. Arm drag, though, from Alistair Black. This is an absolutely phenomenal match here. And we are seeing from these two men. As Brian kicks Alistair down, looking for those yes kicks. And he connected. Possibly looking for the LaBelle lock. He's got, he's got Alistair, he's got Alistair, he's locked it in. He's locked the LaBelle lock in. And Alistair's got a tap. That's one fall for Daniel Bryan. Brian can't stop now, but Alistair firing back. Alistair firing back. As Alistair's looking for the running bicycle knee strike, and he connects. Foot stomp. Double foot stomp. And now looking for Black Mass. Black Mass on Daniel Bryan. Look at the tie this one up right away. One, two, three, and just like that, Alistair tied this matchup up. Now it's one fall to a finish. One fall to a finish now. As both men know that now. Looking to throw Alistair out again for that. Drop kick through the ropes. Throwing Alistair back in here. Very good strategy. It's the only way you're going to score a fall. Because now he's continuing to go after the arm of Alistair Black as if his ribs weren't injured enough. Nightmare takedown. Looking to wear Daniel Bryan down here, but Bryan escaping. And now Bryan going for those yes kicks. And Bryan is tired. And I don't blame him here. I don't blame him. For being as tired as he is. I don't even blame Alistair either because Alistair's got rin injured ribs. Looking for the running knee, but oh my, Alistair Black got out of the way of the running knee. Cutter! 
Looking to get the win here over Daniel Bryan. One, two, and Daniel Bryan with a kick out at two and a half. Now again, working here on Bryan. But it seems that Alice or that Brian knows what to do. Tried to go for a drop kick, but no. Alistair looking for a black mass. Black mass out of nowhere from Alistair Black. One, two, no. Brian kicked out of the black mass. As it looked like Alistair was just about to get the win over Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan said no. Not today. And Alistair looking to pull out all the stops here. But Brian with the arm drag. Brian desperately. Oh. Wise decision there from Alistair. Rolling out to the outside, but Daniel Bryan's right there waiting for him to get back in the ring. And Daniel. Refusing to stop. He's going to keep going. Stomping on the chest. Further injuring the ribs of Aleister Black. And now some more. Yes kicks. What a main event this is. And look at that camera angle kick to the side of the head. Looking for that running knee to finish this one off. Bye bye, Alistair running knee. Is Daniel Bryan going to win at one, two? No, Alistair kicked out at two and a half again, and Daniel Bryan cannot believe it. I'm going after the arm now again. Stomping away. Daniel Bryan going up top here. Daniel Bryan with the headbutt. Again trying to get the win over Alistair. Two. And Alistair kicked out again. Ooh, and a knee. A knee from Alistair. That knee. Double foot stomp. Kick right to the chest. And again, stomping away here on Daniel Bryan. Duplex there. Alistair Black working on the arm of Daniel. These men have been through this grueling match with each other. It has been absolutely brutal. Looking for that. Those yes kicks again. Young Sin, what is up? Good to see you in here, buddy. Welcome to our main event of RCW. Here is Daniel Bryan with, a, with the yes kicks again. Two out of three falls. We are at one fall apiece right now as Daniel Bryan's trying to get the win here over Aleister Black. Aleister Black's got injured ribs and all running knee. One, two, th no! Aleister Black again <laughs> kicks out at two and a half. And Daniel Bryan is like, stay down at this point. I don't know what he's got to do, man. He's done everything. And that knee. Oh, wise decision there from Daniel Bryan. Rolling out to the apron. Giving him a couple minutes to recuperate himself. And a shoulder tackle, though, to the apron, to the outside. But that's not going to help when it comes to getting a fall.
Count of two here. Now stretching Alistair out. Count of four as Daniel Bryan gets out of that submission hold. Count of six here. Daniel Bryan can take this via count out, can take the second fall via count out, but chooses not to. He's not the type of guy to win that way. He is going to wait for Alistair to get back in here. Alistair with a reversal. Brian with a reversal. This has been quite the back and forth match. Tried for a drop kick. No. Alistair said no to that one. And a bulldog there. As Brian got out of dodge. And the quick strikes here from Daniel Bryan. Stop right to the chest again, further injuring the ribs of Alistair Black. Now looking for those yes kicks again. And Daniel Bryan and Alistair, both men, are absolutely winded right now. They are tired as hell, but they are willing to... To dig deep to win this match as Alistair is on the receiving end of these yes kicks and Alistair kicked out. Oh my. Oh my. This continues to go back and forth. Strike for strike, kick for kick. Punch for punch, whatever you want to say. It's a German suplex there to Daniel Bryan, but Daniel Bryan wisely rolling out to the outside, and Alistair's there to meet him. Elbow. Suplex on the outside. Ooh, and the quick strikes. Ooh, what a kick. Maybe that's a little bit of payback for the amount of yes kicks that Daniel Bryan has hit in a spinning knee strike there. From Aleister Black looking for an exploder. Suplex perhaps drop kick. Count of six. And Daniel Bryan gets out. Gets out of the ring. Doesn't want to win the match via count out. He's going to punish Aleister Black, though. That much I do know. That much I do know. Oh, big slap to the face. Drop kick. Count of five. Six. As Alistair starts to stir. Eight. Count of eight. And Daniel Bryan. He could have just won this via count out. Like I said, but he chose not to. He's done that multiple times in this match. I don't know what he's doing. Trying to go for those yes kicks again. Continuing to punish the man Alistair Black is. Oh no. But Alistair's got him right where he wants him. For the running. Bicycle knee strike. No. Daniel Bryan got out of the way. Daniel Bryan got out of the way. But Alistair again taking control. Now looking for that running bicycle knee strike yet again. Bryan got out of it again. Brian got out of it again, but couldn't connect, couldn't be quick enough to connect with anything, and Alistair is right back in the driver's seat. Alistair now looking for a black mass, 
Black Mass one more time. Looking to win over Daniel Bryan. One, two, and Daniel Bryan kicked out of the Black Mass again. Daniel Bryan again refusing to go down. We've seen so many comeback stories with Daniel Bryan, and I think we're going to see one here. Oh my. This match is absolutely bonkers. Trying to get Brian to tap out. But Brian refusing to go down. Refusing to go down without a fight. Going for those yes kicks. And getting those yes kicks just where he wants them. He's got three running knees at his disposal. And he's looking to hit one here. Running knee. One, two. No, Alistair kicked out of, oh my God. Alistair kicked out of the running knee again. And Daniel Bryan. Doesn't know what to do, but he's going to try and hit it again, and he hits it again. Goes for the cover right after. One, two, three, and Daniel Bryan gets the win over Aleister Black in this main event. Finally. After the absolutely <laughs> brutalization of both of these men, one of them finally able to get the one, two, three. And that just happened to be Daniel Bryan. But I can assure you, this is probably not the last time we are going to see these two in an RCW ring together. But what a match between both men, but especially Daniel Bryan. I mean... After, after the running knee being kicked out of so many times, I'm pretty sure Brian was pissed off, but he remained his composure. Went for the running knee again. And finally was able to get Alistair to stay down for the 1-2-3. And that concludes our show, folks. Thank you guys for watching another episode of the RCW Universe Mode or RCW Show, whatever you want to call it. Um, it has been great doing this show for six seasons. We are in the second half of season six with episode 11 being this one. Um, you know, it's it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, I say I say this every time I, I do this stream or I do this show. I say it every time. But the reason why is because... The amount of support that this show gets, the amount of excitement that this show, like, not only brings to me, but you guys as the viewers, um, and you guys as a whole, um, regardless if you've been here for every single RCW stream since day one, or just a couple, or hell, maybe this episode, um, you know, your presence... And your support is greatly appreciated no matter how many times you've been here or how much or how few times you've been here. The endless support of it is insane. And I wouldn't be doing it without you guys. We've been doing this show for a year and a half. Um, well, actually, we'll be a year and a half soon. Um, but we've been doing this show for for a year and a couple months. A year and let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five months. So we've been doing this for a year and five months since August 21st of 2018, I think, 2019, maybe. I'll have to double check. But um, it has been insane, guys. It has been absolutely insane that, you know, through the course of doing this show, for as long as I've done it. Because 
A year may not seem like a long time, but, you know, when I see YouTubers do YouTube series, whether it's a Dynasty series on NCAA football or a Madden franchise series, or anything where it's like something that you can carry it out for a long time versus a walkthrough of a game which you finish the game and that's it unless there's DLC to come with it. Um, you know, for something where I have to keep writing, keep adding to the story, keep this fresh, I guess, or to find ways to make it not seem boring to me as a content creator. Because regardless, I hope you guys don't think it's boring, but regardless, um, you know, I have to find ways to not only keep you guys into it, but also me as the content creator. Because the minute that I find it boring and the minute that I find it, like, just beyond my capacity, um, to the point where I'm just like, F this, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, you know, that's that's the minute where all the fun stops, where I stop the series or whatever. And I've seen that happen to a lot of YouTubers that I like, where they do a series that pretty much defines their channel. Or they do content that pretty much defines their channel. And that's and that's okay. That that is okay. There are some people who do content that pretty much defines their channel, including myself. I am defined by wrestling content. It's in my name, Botch TV. I am defined by wrestling content. I like playing other games, but the reason why I stream wrestling is simply because of the creative aspect. The idea of making a whole new world, the idea of making RCW or Epic Wrestling League with Chaotic and making the storylines, and whatever, like, to me, the only thing that limits you in this sort of content creation frame is your creativity. With community creations, with the ability to download other people's titles, other people's custom superstars, and, and, and all that, and all this stuff, and, and getting used to the universe mode, Chaotic has never played universe mode ever, and I told him, I said, once you get used to it, it gets more fun. You know, once you get used to it and you get used to um, how everything works in universe mode, it gets more fun. And literally, the only limit is your creativity. Like, you can schedule run-ins, you can schedule cash-ins, you can book your own matches. But that's only the tip of the iceberg. That's only what the universe mode gives you. Making these storylines and making them work within the world of WWE 2K games, that is the step further that you as the content creator, or me in this case, have to take, um, like seriously, like have to actually take the time to do and to write and to think of it. Because if you kind of just only use what the game gives you and like don't, have that creative mind or that creative mindset, you're not going to get much out of this universe mode. You're not going to get much out of your universe mode. Like, if even if you do a Raw or SmackDown universe mode and you just use the WWE superstars, there's still a lot of shit that you can do with it, um, you know, that a lot of people don't realize. And a lot of people like to badmouth the 2K games, especially 2K20, and rightfully so. Um, but... I understand people's bad melting 2K20 because of how broken the game is. But I'm talking about generalization. Like, people like to say, oh, the WWE 2K games sucked because of this or because of this. Like, it may have nothing to do with the game. They might just be like, well, it's too boring. Or, well, it it's not for the casual player. Or it's not... Which it isn't. In my opinion, this is the kind of game that I wouldn't pay $60 a year for for every new game if I wasn't a content creator. I'd wait until it turns to $30. Because as a content creator, I feel like this game is more valuable because you get to do things like this. Whereas the casual player, you may just go on, wrestle a match with one of your favorite wrestlers, and, you know, wrestle a match with, you know, your friend on the couch or whatever, and that's it. 
And I can understand why that would get boring or why sports games would get boring and stuff like that. But if you find a way to add another element to it, hence this universe mode, hence the outlaws, hence the storylines and all that stuff, you know? Thank you, Tony, for the lurk. I appreciate it. Um, but when you do stuff like this and you actually take the time to do this stuff, you, you, you think creatively and if, and if you yourself right now are thinking that you aren't creative, I'm going to call bullshit. Uh, I'm going to play devil's advocate here because you are creative. Our brains were wired that way. There, there is, is, there is actually a part of our brain that is responsible for creativeness and and all that other stuff, along with the part of our brain that involves critical thinking and you know, with me with anxiety, that that, that that's a problem. Um, but anyways, we all have parts of our brains that are creative, and to me, when somebody says that they're not creative. One, to me, they're just being negative and they're not seeing their true potential. Or they're not taking the time to sit down and to think of ideas. Because to me, once you sit down and you set your mind on something, content creation-wise, and you sit down and you, and, and you do something, or even if you think, what if I was a professional wrestler? What would I do? What would my name be? Things like the things that were going through my mind when I was making the universe modes, making the outlaws, making the my career universe modes that you guys watch on YouTube. Literally, that was taking a part of something that I watched on TV that I loved so much and making myself a part of it. Because that's what video games does. That's what entertainment does. That's what it's meant to do. Um, to make you a part of the world in some way, shape, or form. You know, I can't tell you how many times I watch The Walking Dead and I think, what if I was in the zombie apocalypse? What weapon would I use? You know, you know things like that. Um, it's little, it's little ideas like that, little things like that that can turn into bigger ideas, and that is what RCW is. Um, initially, that that is what it is. Uh, the Outlaws became something entirely huge that I didn't think was going to happen. I, I, I didn't think that we would have the outlaws the way we do now. I didn't think that it would make a difference um, in the creation of this universe mode here, but it has. Now I'm doing separate series, doing website exclusive series, doing... I have my own website for all this stuff now. Um, my own podcast. My own podcast came out of the idea of it came out of this show really because if i can talk about storylines and i can talk about the outlaws and i can talk about this stuff then why can't i talk about wrestling with chaotic and young sin or on a podcast for an hour and a half to two hours two hours and a half so you know that all of this whole universe has sparked all of these creative ideas from it and that's the thing you take one big you take one little idea make it into something big and then you take the big idea and you find other ways to split it up like into little series like the sky outlaw series that i'm doing the luna outlaw series that i'm doing on the website the luna outlaw my career universe mode the brian outlaw my career universe mode all of those were little tiny ideas that stemmed from one big idea in RCW. So, my advice to anybody that wants to do something like this, whether it's a part of wrestling, whether it's, um, you know, any type of game, just take the time to sit down and to plan out stuff. And that's the thing, is a lot of people don't take the time to do that. And that's why we live in the world that we live in. Um, we don't take the time to, to think about what we are saying, what we are doing. And that's why we have trolls on the internet and, and stuff like that. If we all took the time to sit down and to think, not only creatively, 
but our minds, op op mindfulness, and and things like that, the world would have a, a much more creative, much more accepting and less scary sort of place that the world is in right now. Um, and I know that for a fact. Um, you know, because it's just common sense. You know, if we all accepted each other and found ways to do that, and that's what the outlaws do. The outlaws, uh, you know, me sharing the stories like the tweet that I put out of, you know, domestic violence, relationship violence, something that happens every single day to many victims of male and female. Um, but something that you don't hear about too often is a male victim when it comes to domestic violence. You hear that often with women because it's the more common sort of thing, but it can happen to males too. And I will say that in that tweet I had mentioned that what you are going to see in the Outlaw series, in the Sky Outlaw series, is you are going to see little itty-bitty pieces of that. Um, I take really controversial things or really touchy topics and I look at them in a way that not necessarily to make fun of it or anything like that but to spread a message of saying that this is something that we need to talk about this is something that is considered taboo oh we don't talk about that sort of thing but it needs to be talked about because honestly I don't know about you guys, but I've had enough of people just looking over things. You know what I mean? Turning a blind eye to shit that's happening right in front of them. Um, and they don't want to do a damn thing about it. Uh, I know I've heard Tony talk about it on his podcast with Slev, where they've talked about keeping their DMs open for people who are suffering from any type of mental illness or just having a bad day or whatever. And, and that is, and that alone is something that needs to be, I guess, publicized. Because I feel like the number one thing with people in mental health and people with that have gone through trauma events and, and traumatic events and stuff and, and need that help, um, you know, mental health clinics, these resources that the real world has aren't publicized enough. And that's why we see tragedies that we see often. Because of, or at least in my personal opinion, you know, I didn't know that there was a mental health clinic in my town. I didn't know about it until my counselor at my college told me about it. See, those are the kinds of things that we need to be showing people. You need to be showing people that this X and O, that this happens. We probably don't know why it happens. We probably won't ever know why it happens. But talking about it, rather than trying to figure out... That's the problem, is we try to figure out why something happens. And we can't wrap our head around it, so we kind of are just like, whatever. It is what it is. And we just don't take the time to talk about it. And, you know, in that, in the outlaws and in these storylines that you know, um, you know, especially with the outlaws, you may think that they are just made up half the time, but a lot of the times they are based on real events that I can see happening to somebody or real events that have happened to me in my lifetime in my short lifetime of 21 years. So, with that in mind, and with that tweet that I had sent out, you can check that out on my Twitter. I want, here's what I want you guys to do, and this isn't hard. Uh, I know for some of you that may have experienced those things that are going to be in the series, like depression, anxiety, domestic violence, relationship abuse that may be triggering to you um and i apologize for that but at the same time for those who haven't been through it um for 
for the general public, um, it's important to talk about it. It and and that's really what it is. It, it's taking something that everyone, almost anyone and everyone that I know likes video games or the entertainment industry, and instead of doing what Hollywood does, overly exaggerating every damn thing, um, it's going to take something very delicate and make it as real as possible. Uh, and through my creativity, I promise you guys that it's going to be real. I promise you guys that it's going to be not overly exaggerated. You know, not something like the, the Joker, for example, um, that is highly over exaggerated, um, you know, for Hollywood purposes, even though that the illnesses that he dealt with are very, very real. Um, you know, but you got to keep in mind, he chose to do those actions. And so, you know, I hope with the Sky Outlaw and the Luna Outlaw series for the website, The Dawning, Behind the Mask, and Sky's the Limit, that you guys not only watch them for the enjoyment of wrestling and for the enjoyment of the Outlaws, but you watch it because of the story. You watch it because it takes something delicate such as relationship abuse and domestic violence and anxiety and depression, suicide, um, suicidal thoughts or actions, suicide prevention. You know, a, a lot of these things that we don't talk about, air quotes, um, you know, um, I hope that you take all of that into account and you... You know, get yourself thinking about it. In terms of, in terms of, this is something that we need to talk about, and this is something that we can't just shove under the rug anymore, and say that it doesn't happen. Or, you know, don't open people's arms for to support each other, and for us to love each other through our most difficult and darkest times. And that's what. The outlaws are supposed to do and that's the message that I hope you guys get out of those series so without further ado I'd like to thank all of you for joining me today for another episode of the RCW universe mode um, as far as when I will be recording the um, sky outlaw and Luna outlaw series for the website I have no idea when that's gonna happen um, but when it does uh, you guys will be the first to know about it on my Twitter. I will uh, post a link to the playlist, I guess. Or no, not the playlist, but to the page on the website for you guys to go to every time the episode is up. And and uh, you guys will be able to see that. So thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, sorry for babbling on towards the end of the stream here, but you know I figured... It was something that needed to be said, and uh, considering it's my content um, that has to do with it, um, I figured it uh, it was worth saying. So thank you guys for everything that you guys do. I wouldn't be doing this show without you guys. I wouldn't be doing any of this stuff, the website or anything. Keep that traffic going for the website. Keep it going. Let's get it going. Let's keep it going. Let's keep supporting each other, keep loving each other, and making the world a better place. And with that, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.